All right, guys. Uh, so I feel like this is oh, this has gone on forever. Um, yeah, hope you guys are finding this okay. I know we've had some issues starting off with um, kind of the YouTube thing not being compatible with your county uh, your county Chromebooks and stuff. So uh, if you are having problems, um, reach out to maybe a friend. Uh, most people are doing okay right now. Um, from what I've seen, I've only had a, a handful of you guys that are like emailing me and saying, Hey, like having issues, like I can't make this work. So, um, I'm working on it. I've been working on it with administration. Um, and so just, uh, again, probably the easiest way to go about this right now. Um, and again, if you're watching this and you have friends that can't figure out how to like how to make it work, uh, maybe tell them and try to help them out with that. Uh, cause we're kind of still all in this situation together right now. So, um, you know, let them know, uh, your easiest way to make this work right now is probably just to find my channel on YouTube and uh, watch it on a, an external device, something that is not issued by the county, right? Um, so, yeah, uh, just got to say I'm extremely bored. I've read two books since we got out, and it's been like not that long, um, just a couple just a couple days. So, yeah, being really bummed out, just kind of sitting around the house. So, I miss you guys a lot. I hope you guys are having fun, I guess, by yourselves, playing probably a lot of Xbox and watching a lot of Netflix. I'm almost out of stuff on Netflix to watch, but I have a ton of books left to read, so it's good. All right, so today um, we are going to talk about uh, FDR. So we're going to go from slide 35 to uh, 44, so we'll stop at essentially 43. So today's a really quick one. Um, we left off the other day talking about Hoover. And kind of the end of his presidency, we talked a little bit about his response, about that Adam Smith hands-off response. We talked about um, the Dust Bowl and the Bonus Army and kind of how that all wraps up and ends his presidency and America starts looking for change, right? So um, like we said before, the 1920s were a it was a, it was a Republican era, right? So Warren G. Harding, Calvin Coolidge, Hoover the end of Hoover's presidency, um, there's uh, all the things that happen and kind of that idea of the Great Depression, Americans start looking for a change for the economy, how to make the economy bounce back and help that out. So, wow, that's super hot. All right. Um, so anyway, so today we're going to talk about FDR. So after, uh, after Hoover gets, uh, he gets a, uh, out of office, people again, or he's coming to the end of his presidency. People start looking to change things up for um, from a Republican to a Democrat. So FDR comes in and he runs for president in 1932, and again he he wins. Um, FDR is a Democrat. Um, so go to slide 36. Basically, a couple things that you need to understand. The president coming in, these are the things he's going to have to deal with. 25% unemployment rate. Um, he's got this major agricultural crisis in the Midwest and the Great Plains. Banks have failed. Um, he has got this major shift in American mindset, which again, I told you, people are now looking to the government to fix the problem. And there is a never-before-seen poverty and mass homelessness in the United States. So he's got a lot to deal with. Um, that is just, again, that's the situation that he has on his plate coming into office. Um, so go to the next slide. Uh, and again, American mindset. All right. Dive off into this a little bit. Um, for most Americans, the, the great depression is a very personal affair. All right. So for example, back in, and we've talked about kind of the role of women, right? Um, although women in the 1920s are a lot more liberated and they are they kind of take that step outside of the home. Sorry, my computer's about to die. Let me plug it up. Uh, they take that step outside of the home. Uh, they still very much are housewives and mothers and, and whatnot. So that means that men are the breadwinner of their families. When I say breadwinner, if you're not familiar with that term, meaning like um, the term refers to somebody who puts bread on the table, right? The one who feeds the family and all of that stuff. So men are responsible for bringing in uh, the income and livelihood and all of that during the depression. Um, 
So during this time, most men are actually super lucky to have a job. Um, and if they did, they actually lived in constant fear of losing their job. So, um, it's, it's this kind of never ending cycle of, uh, you know, if I'm going to get to keep my job and then losing the job and then trying to find work and all that. So, and even if you did have a job as well, you felt guilty often because a lot of your family and a lot of your friends didn't. Um, so your neighbors, like most of the people on your street would be unemployed and that would cause, ooh, that would cause a lot of separation because people were jealous and they were upset because they were struggling to have that work, right? So, um, this actually, it causes birth rates to fall the lowest, um, mark in U.S. history. And a couple of reasons for that is one, because babies are super expensive, right? You got to feed them, got to clothe them, got to take care of them. Somebody's got to stay home and watch them or get childcare. Again, another thing that's cost money if you don't have any that's again when we talk about the idea of necessity versus luxury child care it's going to be interesting to see where that falls for most families right so um next slide children also end up suffering a lot from this because both of the parents are working to um to kind of keep that the family together right and keep them fed and keep them alive so with both parents working, <sighs> discipline kind of falls off. A lot of kids quit schools. Um, so yeah, um, it's just kind of this major thing. So you think about kind of the economic crisis and what it even does to the behavior of children. Um, a lot of kids don't have parents and role models that will, you know, teach them wrong from right and all these things because they're out trying to survive and stay together. So um, most families actually stick it out together and they, they work hard, they work together to survive this hardship, but some actually fall apart and that just kind of compounds problems for most people in the United States. Um, and the people at the bottom of the, the spectrum, like the economic spectrum, the bottom of the economic rung, they kind of are the ones that feel this the most. Now, again, why do I talk about this with FDR? Well, Again, it's just, if you look at that slide 36, you go back to slide 36, you're looking at all of these things. Something that will affect a presidency is the idea of family. Like um, having family stick together, that's something that's that's a problem in the United States. And people are going to start looking at the president to, to kind of uh, take care of that and fix it. Um, so uh, go on to the next slide. Uh, yeah, so Mel the Hess, right? Um it's all over the place, okay? America has got economic, social, family, political, all types of problems, and they're trying to deal with that. So, go on to slide 40, okay? FDR, we're going to talk about him and the solution, right? Um, when FDR comes in, he's elected in 32 at the height of the Depression. I think that the actual peak of the Depression is in 33, but um, it's still, he's, he's right there at the cusp of it, right? It is important to know that he is a Democrat from New York. Now, that is not as important right this second, but it is going to play a role into something later on. Um, we've talked about over time uh, throughout the class about this idea of Northern versus Southern Democrats or Dixiecrats, as I've called them before. Um, that is going to be a huge divide with Roosevelt. Um, so another thing with Roosevelt is his health is actually really significant. Um, if you don't know, Roosevelt's in a uh, wheelchair. Um, he has polio, and uh, he can't walk. He's lost the loose, uh, loose use of his legs, um, which there's some inspiring stories to tell you guys about that later on when we uh, get to World War II and stuff, um, how he uses that to his advantage. But um, So he's judged a lot um, because at this point in time, people look at this as a sign of weakness, right? And I mean, granted, you know, you can say what you want about a handicap, but... It is a type of – people just judge it, right? They, they see him as not being able to be a full man, and that is going to cause problems for him as a president, right, at least in the eyes of America. Um, when he is elected, uh, it's actually – and again, this is something you would never see today, right? The media actually chooses to not photograph him in his wheelchair because it makes him look weak. And the last thing that the country needs is the leader of their country to appear – broken or weak or, you know, whatever you may be, right? 
people judge that. So, um, Roosevelt comes in and he promises, like, I'm going to combat the Depression. Well, the question of how he does that is, is a different story. So, go on to the new slide, or the next slide, sorry. No, that's funny. Uh, all right, the New Deal, right? This is Roosevelt's plan, okay? Roosevelt has one plan to um, kind of uh, fix the New Deal and his plan, or excuse me, to fix the Great Depression, and his plan is called the New Deal. All right, so uh, go on to the next slide. Um, so basically, he says he's going to combat this crisis in three ways, which is relief, recovery, and reform. Now, we'll talk about a little bit more about these things, and I'm going to post... Um, along with the T-chart, the President T-chart you guys have on Canvas, there is another thing that's like the uh, uh, New Deal uh, program graphic organizer or something along those lines. Um, I haven't actually posted it yet, but I will put it up there for you guys um, by the time this video actually posts for your assignment. So you need to have that um, as we walk through these programs. Uh, so relief, recovery, and reform, it, it comes in three ways, and you can start thinking about what these terms actually mean. So relief... If you're talking about relief, it's going to be like, you know, I always put it in terms of a hurricane. If you have like a hurricane come through, what does relief look like in a hurricane? What does recovery look like in a hurricane? What does reform look like in a hurricane? So we'll talk about those later on the next couple of days. So anyway, like I've told you, American mindset shifts and people start seeing the, uh, the federal government as a solution. Um, so, <laughs> and this is kind of one of those things that makes me laugh a little bit um roosevelt says he will quote boldly experiment with the economy so if you think about any leaders saying that today right they're essentially saying like i'm gonna take the economy to the poker table right i'm going to experiment we're gonna try some things and again you would think today most people would panic about that back then they were so desperate and they they were in such a state of kind of like panic that that didn't scare anybody because one is it couldn't get much worse and two like they were looking for anything that could help right so um yeah uh it is important to understand kind of like what what roosevelt's plan was so that last um let me see uh that last slide all right and this is more going to pertain to tomorrow so uh, it just says the first 100 days. So the first 100 days of the New Deal, when Roosevelt comes into office, the New Deal, his first 100 days are going to be the banking holiday, this thing called FIRA, the CWA, AAA, NRA, not the National Rifle Association, but I have a funny story for that uh, later, and I'll tell you guys about it. Uh, the C and TVA, which you guys are probably familiar with. Um, so that's it for the lecture today. Now, here's what you need to do. Uh, and again, I'll post this on your announcement. Um roll over to canvas after this video uh and i'm gonna go look so i don't mislead all of you all right once you're there uh you'll see something like uh um fireside chat okay there's there's a primary source like we've always done the only difference now is that you don't have to write it on paper you will type it um there's a source which i'm not sure if i actually posted the reading source or the youtube source there is a youtube video out there if you want to listen to this rather than um then uh, read it. Um, but a lot of people, every student that I've had in the past is like, it's so hard to understand. So I'm going to leave that option up to you. Uh, after you read it, answer the questions. Um, there is, let's see. Well, my internet's being really slow. So uh, anyway, there's a couple questions on it. Um, answer those and go ahead and turn those in. Um, again, it's primary source, just like we've always done. Type it up, submit it in that the same way you've been submitting everything on Canvas, and that'll be it for the day. Um, we'll check back tomorrow. We'll go through a few new programs and do some other stuff. I will tell you, uh, there is going to be a project over the uh, Great Depression. Um, it's a little bit more fun, so uh, but I will give you a few days to work on that when we when I sign it. So, yeah. Um, all right, cool. So that's it for today. Uh, yeah, miss you guys. Hope you guys are all staying safe, staying healthy. Uh, if you guys, again, need anything, make sure you send me a message on Canvas. We'll chat about it. Um, hope you guys out best I can, and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So be good, stay safe, and I'll catch you guys later.